today, more than 40 people still unaccounted for after flooding in Virginia. Officials say over 100 homes were damaged or destroyed. With inflation at a record 41-year high, many are feeling the pinch. We hear what consumers have to say about it. Twitter's lawsuit against Elon Musk is heading toward the Delaware court. We spoke to the CEO of Truth Social. How will it play out and will it benefit their platform? President Biden is in Israel today. Find out what the president is doing in efforts to prevent Iran from getting nuclear weapons. Good morning. I'm Kevin Hogan. I'm Evelyn Leeds. Good to have you with us. Thursday today, July 14th, and over 40 people are still unaccounted for after a severe flooding in southwest Virginia on Tuesday. Virginia's governor has declared a state of emergency. Officials say more than 100 homes were damaged or destroyed. No deaths have been reported yet, however, and authorities say the unaccounted for are not necessarily missing. People could have left their homes to move to higher ground, and they may be unable to contact loved ones because of power outages and poor cell phone service. But washed out bridges and landslides are making surge and rescue efforts difficult. Thunderstorms and torrential rain poured over the region multiple times, causing flash flooding. Last year, because of floods, 50 people needed rescue and one died. It was after remnants of Hurricane Ida passed through the same area. Inflation is at a 41-year high. New data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics came out yesterday. It shows inflation is up 9.1 percent from a year ago in June. We find out what consumers think about it. And today's Jeremy Sandberg reports. Prices for food, housing and gasoline are all rising. Shoppers are recalling the words of President Joe Biden last year, who assured Americans inflation was temporary. No, I don't think the government's done a good job because all last year this began and they did nothing because they thought it was temporary. Once inflation gets in people's mind, it's endemic and uh, then everybody wants higher wages and uh, it begins to spiral. The Consumer Price Index released Wednesday for all urban consumers reports a 1.3% increase last month alone after rising 1% in May. High inflation is likely to be at the front of voters' minds in November's general elections. If you look at surveys, whether it's with Harvard or with Pew, uh, this is, this is, inflation is the number one topic for, uh, for customers today, and we're well aware of that. A potential political risk for the Democratic Party and President Biden after he told the American public that price increases were going to be transitory. I think I buy more generics now than I used to because of, um, because of inflation. The CPI found prices for food at home rose by 12.2 percent since June last year. But not only the things are more expensive, the portion are smaller and the prices are higher, so they try to trick you. Housing is up 5.6 percent since a year ago, and energy prices rose a staggering 41.6 percent in that same one-year period. But gas prices are by far the biggest increase seen. Of course, we've all noticed mostly at the gas pump with costs up almost 60 percent over the last 12 months. Airline fares declined slightly by 1.8 percent last month, but are still up 34.1 percent from a year ago. Experts have been hoping June's consumer price index could indicate the peak of the inflation crisis, but it's still not clear when it will flatten out. We did expect a very strong increase in June, with relief coming in July. However, it's not just the top line number, the one that we're all attached to, it's the way in which inflation is broadening out and now looks to be persistent. The Fed will likely continue to raise interest rates in an effort to rein in runaway inflation, which will make it more expensive to borrow, from car loans to mortgages and credit cards. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. Now, traders are betting the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates by 1% later this month. Some analysts actually blame the Fed for over-manipulating the market and not letting it recalibrate. Another big issue they say is contributing to inflation is government spending. Some say the Biden administration is overestimating renewable energy and underestimating fossil fuels. President Biden says he is aiming to build a more resilient and sustainable economy this way, but many say he should be doing more in terms of domestic energy production. 
And shortly after arriving in the Middle East, President Biden issued a statement saying June inflation numbers are out of date, given the recent drop in gas prices. But some GOP senators disagree. He said that same thing when I put this similar chart up months ago. It hasn't changed. Yeah, there's been a small tick down in the gas prices, but they are still the major driving force here. And they're still above $5 a gallon. I think the answer is the president needs to stop looking for excuses and start focusing on the right kinds of policies. Bring down the price of gasoline at the pump and provide a, some real relief uh, to American consumers if we would just uh, produce more energy here at home. A member of the Texas Public Policy Foundation think tank shared the same view. Chuck DeVore is a retired Army intelligence officer. He writes about the economy and how energy, tax, and regulatory policies influence general prosperity. Here's his take on the president's visit to the Middle East. Here you have our president now in the Middle East going to Saudi Arabia, a nation that not long ago he branded a pariah state, a nation that you know we supposedly couldn't have dealings with anymore. And why is he in Saudi Arabia? He's in Saudi Arabia to beg the crown prince for more oil, that the, this nation state that uh, supposedly was so bad we couldn't talk to them. The president's going there to say, please pump more oil because, uh, you know, gasoline costs too much in America. Now, President Biden could take steps. Uh, it would anger his left wing base. But if he could take steps now to make it uh, more easy, more effective for American domestic oil and gas producers to pull American oil and gas out of the ground. But he's not going to do that. The battle between Twitter and Elon Musk is moving into the courtroom in Delaware. Twitter says Musk can't just trash the company and then walk away. Musk initially said that he didn't care about economics at all and that he invested in Twitter to make it a platform for free speech. To discuss the lawsuit, we're bringing in Devin Nunes, now CEO of Trump Media and Technology Group. Good to have you. Hey, great to be with you. Thank you. And I would say let's address the elephant in the room first. After all, the deal could have made Twitter a major competitor for Truth Social. So how do you feel about Musk backing out? Well, we've actually never seen Twitter as a as anything but a house of cards that I think Elon Musk now discover because there's so many bot and spam accounts. What we're really focused on is TikTok, which is where the younger users in this country are. There's probably tens of millions of young people that are on TikTok, which is owned by the Chinese. And then, of course, Instagram is in that big demographic from 25 to 54 and then Facebook above that. But in terms of, of normal people, average Americans, Twitter is just not a competitor of ours. Uh, it's kind of a global PR wire that is promoted by the fake news. Uh, people use it to put out their press releases over the Internet. Uh, but with all that said, President Trump and I were very supportive of Elon Musk buying this company because the mission of True Social is to open the Internet back up and give the American people their voice back and ultimately people around the world. And now Twitter, of course, is suing. How do you think things will play out there? You know, I, I think it's a slippery slope uh, for, for Twitter. I'm not sure, you know, if they go through with this and you ultimately get into discovery, um, my guess is that Elon Musk is going to be, his overall thesis is going to be correct, that the numbers that Twitter promotes and puts out there to the market of their daily active users in the United States it just simply can't be true. So I just look at the amount of engagement that people are getting on True Social in our infancy. Doesn't it doesn't make it look very good for Twitter? And uh, to wrap this up, I mean, while Twitter the Twitter deal is falling through, did that have any impacts on Truth Social? Or I mean, how is the platform doing right now? You know, we didn't actually see uh, you know anything major uh, after the uh, Elon Musk deal. Um, we, you know, in terms of our, I mean, every day we gain more users. Every day uh, we get, you know, we continue to set records nearly uh, every day. I mean, obviously when some, when things are hot, we kind of peak up. Uh, but but look, we just continued to grow, and I, I just didn't see it. And I and I think the reason we don't see it is for the reasons that I said that just normal people just aren't on Twitter, and that's why our focus really is on TikTok and Instagram and and Facebook because look, there's. Love it or love it or not, uh, there's there's tens of millions, if not over 100 million Americans or more 
on those three platforms, which I think should conserve con, should cons, you know really concern uh, every American that you're either on a Chinese owned platform where they're sucking up all of our data of our kids, or you're on very heavy censorship platforms that are extremely left wing and do the bidding and propagate. They play games with the propaganda war for the left in this country. And and look, I'll just finish up with the reason you have to remember. Uh, President Trump did not need a new company. I didn't need a new job. I was perfectly you know, happy representing my folks that, that I represented in, in Congress for so long. But we had no choice because so many millions of people, millions of Americans were censored or kicked off of all the other platforms, including President Trump. And so that's why, you know, what, what I say to everyone is, is that we have a very simple mission. We're here to open the Internet back up and give the American people their voice back. Right. And on that note, thank you so much, Devin Nunes, for your time this morning. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Great to be with you. The House of Representatives approved a bill on Wednesday that expands treatment for veterans exposed to toxic burn pits. The package improves health care and disability benefits for millions of soldiers affected while serving in Iraq and Afghanistan. The bill passed with a vote of 342 to 88. Military veterans serving near burn pits can get medical care through the Department of Veterans Affairs. The time for their treatment after discharge will double from five to 10 years. The bill directs Veterans Affairs to presume certain respiratory illnesses and cancers were related to burn pit exposure. This allows veterans to obtain disability payments to compensate for their injury without having to prove the illness was a result of their service. It's widely expected to pass in the Senate and go to the president's desk for his signature. A former CIA agent was convicted in federal court Wednesday. He is charged with carrying out the largest leak of classified data ever. Joshua Schulte handed the data to WikiLeaks in 2016, which published it in 2017 under the title Vault 7. Schulte was a computer engineer with the CIA Center for Cyber Intelligence. He created special tools designed to pull data undetected from the agency's computers. The prosecutors say, say he accessed some of the country's most valuable intelligence gathering cyber tools. An ongoing feud with management and a co-worker motivated Schulte to release the data. He was first arrested in 2017 on child pornography charges, then indicted on the data breach charges months later. 7-Eleven is serious about catching the gunman that killed two people at its stores this week. The convenience store is offering a $100,000 reward for information leading to an arrest and conviction. The shootings appeared to have occurred after robberies or attempted robberies at the four convenience stores on July 11th or 7-Eleven. It came on a day when the national 7-Eleven brand was celebrating its 95th birthday by giving out free Slurpee drinks. The shootings happened at two locations on the same night in Orange County, California. Authorities believe they are connected. Surveillance photos show a masked man wearing a black sweatshirt with white lettering and green leaves on its front. He was wearing a hood over his head. Three other people were wounded in the shootings. And Starbucks is closing 16 stores around the country because of repeated safety issues. The closures are part of a larger effort to respond to staff concerns, including drug use and other disruptive behaviors threatening staff. The coffee giant is closing six stores in its hometown of Seattle, six in Los Angeles, two in Portland, Oregon, and one each in Philadelphia and Washington. Employees will be given the opportunity to transfer to other stores, but the company also faced criticism from some workers who said they weren't consulted or given any options besides closure. The closures took on added significance because of an ongoing unionization effort at Starbucks U.S. stores. Nearly 200 stores have voted to unionize since late last year. Starbucks insists, though, the closures aren't related to the drive for unionization. Kansas will be the location for a multi-billion dollar mega factory producing electric vehicle batteries for Tesla and other car makers. Japan's Panasonic Corporation selected the location lured by the largest package of taxpayer-funded incentives the state has ever offered a private business. The company and Governor Laura Kelly announced the new project on Wednesday.
The state created the new program offering incentives that could reach $1 billion or more in only five months because of the Panasonic's project. State officials expect the new plant to have around 4,000 workers. That would make Panasonic a top 20 private employer for the state in terms of its size. The project will also create over 16,000 temporary construction jobs. Panasonic says it will invest about $4 billion in the plant in DeSoto, Kansas. It's a town with close to 6,000 people. The town has been trying to redevelop a long-abandoned Army ammunition plant. Kansas Senator Jerry Moran suggests the project has national significance for lessening U.S. dependence on China for manufactured products. And we have some stats for you here. Peru is one of the world's largest producers of cocaine. A 2020 estimate said there were around 150,000 acres of coca leaf crops in the country. Now the anti-drug chief is requesting U.S. aid. Peru's anti-drug chief is seeking a deal with the United States to combat, combat the use of planes to smuggle cocaine. A hot spot of coca leaf crop is the border between Peru and Brazil. This area has sextupled in size over two years, adding 25,000 acres of coca leaf. The chief is asking for non-lethal aid in combating the smugglers. Peru received similar support two decades ago until the Peruvian Air Force shot down a plane that they mistook for a smuggler's plane that killed two U.S. citizens. Coming up, President Biden visits the Middle East. He plans to sign a joint pledge with Israel today that vows to stop Iran from getting nuclear weapons. And heat waves in China are affecting more than 900 million people over the last 30 days, sweeping across densely populated megacities from Shanghai on the coast to Chengdu deep in the heartlands. Stay tuned for more right after the break. NTD's Capital Report. It's about getting answers. Cutting through the fog of politics. It's about your questions and our chances to ask. What is the net impact of the American Carson Graves? Thank you for joining us. We're speaking to those in power to find out what does this mean for the people. We're here so you are in the know. At The Nation Speaks, we don't just scratch the surface. We want to go wide and deep. Our viewers come away with a much richer understanding of the issues of the day. We really make a big effort to bring on different voices onto the show. We don't just talk to experts and newsmakers, which of course are extremely important, but we also want to hear from the American people. So the people who are impacted by the policies and issues that we're talking about, because what they have to say is just as important to the national conversation. President Biden arrived in Israel on Wednesday. It's his first Middle East trip since taking office in 2021. The president is meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid today. They plan to sign a joint agreement vowing to prevent Iran from obtaining nuclear weapons. A senior Biden administration official says the deal aims to address Iran's destabilizing activities in the area and that the agreement will promise ongoing military support for Israel as well as support for the Abraham Accords. Biden is seeking a return to the Iran nuclear deal. However, some Israelis and Gulf Arabs officials believe that would provide more money for Iran to support proxy forces in Lebanon, Syria, Yemen, and Iraq. Biden says the deal was the best chance at stopping Iran from getting a nuclear bomb. In a pre-taped interview with an Israeli TV host, President Biden says the U.S. would use force as a last resort to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. Are you committed to keep the RGC on the foreign terrorist uh, organization list, even if that means that kills the deal? Yes. You, uh, in the past, said you'll do anything, and you say it again, that you'll ensure Iran would not acquire nuclear weapons. Does that also mean, sir, that you would use uh, force against Iran? Is that what that means? That was the last resort, yes. After some initial failures, the Pentagon is announcing success in its testing of hypersonic missiles. 
The Air Force conducted two successful back-to-back -back tests of its air-launched missiles that reached hypersonic speeds. Meanwhile, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, also tested a ground-based system. DARPA has a hypersonic boost glide system that can be launched from a standard military truck. The U.S. military is making an effort to catch up to Chinese and Russian hypersonic missile capabilities. Russia recently became the first nation ever to use hypersonic weapons in its war in Ukraine. Disruptions in the solar energy industry are increasing solar prices to a 10-year high. The cause is attributed to the pandemic and the war in Ukraine. U.S. solar energy prices increased by more than 8 percent in the second quarter. This price increase makes solar prices over 25 percent higher from last year. The Commerce Department is investigating tariffs from Southeast Asian products and soaring input costs. The investigation is stalling projects contributing to the increase in solar energy prices. The cost of wind energy increased by 2.5 percent last quarter and are up 33 percent from last year. And in China, heat waves are affecting more than 900 million people over the last 30 days. On Wednesday, searing heat swept across densely populated megacities from Shanghai on the coast to Chengdu deep in the heartlands. More than 90 red alerts were active across China as of today, warning of temperatures exceeding 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Most were in the Yangzhe Basin, which spans nearly 1,200 miles from the coast to the heart of China. Shanghai, China's commercial capital, issued its second red alert in four days. An elderly resident in Nanjing, a nearby city with over 9 million people, says the summer has never been hotter. South of Shanghai, in the province of Zhejiang, a record of 51 red alerts were issued in one day. Local media reported people being admitted to hospitals because of heat stroke, with some even dying. The neighboring coastal provinces were also suffering under the high heat. Further inland, Henan, Sichuan, and Heilongjiang, many were hospitalized for heat stroke. With an underreported number of deaths in China's southwest, temperatures reaches 111 degrees Fahrenheit on Monday, the highest since record keeping started in 1959. In the past month, high temperature events have affected more than two thirds of China's population and a total area of roughly half of the country. Because of higher demands for air conditioning, of course, the load on the power grids in seven provinces and regions hit a record high. An outage and an upgrade of the grid was scheduled this week in the capital of southwestern Sichuan province, coinciding with the hot weather. It sparked loud protest from some of its 21 million residents on social media. And coming up, normally a dog park, you see pooches of all shapes and sizes frolicking and playing. But what happens when you put a bunch of introverted dogs together? That and more after the break. This is Lee Smith from Over the Target. I'm here to announce a brand new show available only on Epoch TV, and that's Over the Target Live, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. For an hour each Thursday, starting at 9, we'll be speaking with guests live, and I'll be taking questions from you live as well, touching on all the themes, topics, subjects, and issues that Over the Target is known for, from foreign policy and national security to this, our great American life. I'll look forward to seeing you soon, and I'll look forward to hearing from you soon, too. Thursday nights at 9 for Over the Target Live. I'm Lee Smith. Thanks. Normally at a dog park, you see dogs of all shapes and sizes playing together, but when the dogs are introverts, it makes for a hilarious standoff. What happens when you put a bunch of introverted dogs together? Take a look. It's worse than the office Christmas party before the liquor flows. Standing apart, all of them avoiding eye contact. One of the owners described it as like a pasture of cows at a dog park in Sweden. 
This yeah. Swedish couple shot the video that went far. We found a group that was for introverted dogs, and uh, we thought it was perfect for Kila because she... Um... <laughs> Keela, a rescued street dog, is selective about other canines and has had only one best friend, this wiener dog. Instead of using the word introverted, gather more calm dogs. Sophia and Timmy prefer calm. The meetup lasted an hour. The video shows only the waning moments when everyone seemed to have had enough of each other. Dogs thinking this could have been an email. <laughs> The couple found the group of calm uh, dogs. Uh, some Facebook, like for different <laughs> kind of dogs. And um, the dog does not seem introverted with you. Two. No. At the meetup amid pooches planted like statues, two of the introverts passed like ships in the night. And though Keela may be the life of the party with her owners, she preferred catching bugs in her mouth to catching the eye of any other introverts. You know, it's kind of like a grade school dance. Oh my God. All right, what's next, Evelyn? Oh, that was hilarious. I think I'm going to rewatch this. But yes, next, the heat wave didn't only affect us humans, but also animals. A black bear in Massachusetts is trying to cool off in a backyard pond, but the homeowner's koi fish had other ideas. Footage from security camera shows the bear entering the pond to quench its thirst. It's panting heavily as it soaks its fur for about a minute before the koi came to chase it away. The homeowner says the bear got into the pond after making an unwelcome visit to his vegetable garden first. The bear visited the backyard shortly after the homeowner's tiny dog went back into the house. The homeowner says that bears have repeatedly come to cool off in the fish pond during the summer. They also often have other wild animals make visits in their backyards. That's why they installed security cameras to capture the action. It seems that the koi fish are doing a good job guarding their home. I have to get some. Oh yes, I, I'm, I'm into that too. We all need some good uh, guard koi fish. That's all for today's program. Thanks for watching. I'm Evelyn Lee. And I'm Kevin Hogan. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Did you know YouTube only keeps selective videos on its platform? So if you want to make sure you get the full picture, just subscribe to our newsletter. Go to newsletter.ntd.com and sign up. It's free.